here's my message to dads. Dads like Joe, you can be a gun owner and for gun safety. There's nothing in this dad, in this guy that says being for gun safety means we're coming after your guns or we're take the second amendment. That's always been a load of BS. We have to work together. Let's send a message to Washington, D.C. And if we don't, the next kid could be yours. This is because of you, Fred. Even though I disagree with some of the measures you're advocating, this is a moment. And and you so profoundly pushing this, this, this concept of dads for gun safety, I'd be honored to be a part of that in, in, a, in, a, in a gesture of real bipartisanship. Last year on Morning Joe, former Republican Congressman Joe Walsh took a bold bipartisan step and agreed to help anti-gun violence activist Fred Guttenberg with his Dads for Gun Safety national campaign. The move highlighted that it is possible for gun owners and gun safety advocates to come together to demand reforms in hopes of improving kids' safety in schools and throughout the country. And back with us again is Fred Guttenberg, his 14-year-old daughter, Jamie, was murdered in the halls of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in the 2018 mass shooting in Parkland, Florida. And former Congressman Joe Walsh of Illinois, he is no longer affiliated with the Republican Party. They will be marching together tomorrow in a Washington, D.C. rally against gun violence, and they join us right now. So, Fred, um, Columbine, uh, Sandy Hook, Parkland, and then Texas. Mm -hmm. Again, more kids shot up, more kids killed, the same excuses, the same BS. Where do we go from here? So I've been in D.C. all week. Um, I was there Wednesday night when the votes in the House were being counted. I was there for many of the hearings. Um, where do we go? We broke through one wall this week, but we got a long ways to go. We got to get through the Senate. And I'll say this, um, because I watched everything last night, too, and I can't stop thinking about what if that looked more like the attack on Michigan and some of those folks had guns? The events are connected. And those who spent this week fighting what I do in Washington, D.C., calling me a gun grabber, saying we're against the Second Amendment, they're the same ones who likely were seeking pardons that Liz Cheney talked about last night. The reality of gun violence and the attack on democracy are connected, um, and we must, we must demand either the Senate follow up on what the House has done, or we go to November and we make this the voting issue of our time. And I do believe the American people understand what's at stake, and they will vote for gun safety candidates, and in doing so, they will also be defending democracy. Joe Walsh, uh, we did see that bill make it through the House mm -hmm. of Representatives. It's widely believed not to go anywhere in the Senate because it would need 60 votes to pass. But you are a, a gun owner yourself. You have come to the table in this conversation with Fred. And I know Fred's grateful for that. And it's great to have these two competing points of view together trying to work through this problem that's plaguing our country right now. So what is on the table from your point of view as a gun owner? What could you accept as someone who who respects Second Amendment rights, but also understands there needs to be some change here. Yeah, yeah, look, Willie, I am a gun owner, a responsible gun owner. I'm somebody who Fred Guttenberg called a crazy gun nut a few years ago. And, <laughs> and if Fred and I can sit down together and try to find common ground, damn it, anybody can. Willie, I, I don't think anything happens until responsible gun owners like me stand up, get off our ass, and pressure Senate Republicans to do something. I'm so pissed off that folks like Fred have been out there 
tirelessly for the last few years doing this all on their own. This is time for responsible gun owners to stand up and say enough. And Willie, I think the spot to do it in is before anybody buys a gun. Universal background checks should be automatic. Red flag laws should be automatic. This is where I think the two sides can come together. And what about raising the gun age? I know you've been hesitant to that, not on all guns, but on semi-automatic rifles like the AR-15 that we've seen time and time again, most recently in Uvalde and in Buffalo, where young men have gone in, in the case of the Uvalde shooter, a couple of days after his birthday, and been able to buy those weapons and to use them to kill children in that case. Are you open to the idea of at least raising that age from 18 to 21? Because I've been listening, Willie, to people like Fred and David Hogg, I'm open to putting that on the table. I'm less concerned about the age, 18 to 21, and I'm much more concerned about the training. I mean, Uvalde, an 18-year-old, walked into a gun dealer, bought a gun without any training. I'd have the same problem, Willie, if a 21-year-old had done that, but I'm open to discuss it. Hey, Fred, it's uh, Jonathan Lemire. Give us your sense, if you will, as to what your, your assessment of the congressional negotiations going on right now. Senator yeah. Murphy from Connecticut, who is sort of the loudest voice on the Democratic side, has said that he does believe something will get done, but he's acknowledging it'll probably be pretty incremental. Some red flag laws, uh, yeah. perhaps expanding, but not uh, significantly so, background checks. Are you of the belief, as he has said, that, well, any progress is good progress, we'll take what we can get for now? What should happen next? I love Senator Murphy. And I, and I love his optimism, and I know he's working 24-7 at this right now. And yet, you still can't find 10 Republicans to do this. And I don't think he will. I think this party is hell-bent on thwarting the will of what the majority of America wants, for whatever reason. When I, when I, and I'll give you two reasons why I'm less optimistic than he is. One. The leader, Mitch McConnell, still won't say the word gun. And two, Governor Rick Scott, who came to Jamie's funeral, who I spoke with on a really regular basis to pass legislation in Florida. And in fact, he led the way. He led the way as governor in Florida to do really important things, to raise the age of 21, to pass red flag laws, to do a waiting period. Governor Rick Scott doesn't exist anymore, and Senator Rick Scott is running away from the Governor Rick Scott. Senator Rick Scott wants nothing to do with this. That, to me, is the telltale sign that this is ultimately going to be an issue. The truth is, since Jamie was killed, we've moved this country further into a gun safety majority. We have a president who will sign legislation, a House that just passed legislation, and a Senate that is 50% there. America, if you value life, if you value your children, children who can vote, if you value your parents, make sure you figure out right now how you're gonna vote and who the gun safety candidates are and vote for them. Because at this moment, it's really looking challenging to get this through the Senate. Fred Guttenberg and Joe Walsh, thank you both thank you. very much for coming on this morning and for what you're doing. It is